Okay, so today basically I uh, will be looking at uh, chapter 10 of the book, which talks about evaluating uh, regression uh, models. Uh, basically, I borrowed, I think I'll be making use of, I think this is still your notes, which are the previous course. So that like the learning objective is determine whether a model is fair. Then we are going to what determine how wrong is uh, how how wrong a model is, and also we look at uh, determine how our models posterior predictive uh, accuracy. So, like in the in the first part, uh, there when uh, when we are working uh, maybe with a, a model, so our Bayesian model, we, there are some key questions uh, uh, in which we need to ask ourselves before we uh, we proceed. In evaluating that model, first we need to we need to have an understanding how we need to understand how these data were collected, maybe in the field or anywhere how we collect those data. We need to have a detailed understanding of that. Then we need to know who who collected uh, the data for by whom or for what purpose uh, was uh, was the data collected. Then we need to also understand. How might the result of the analysis or data collection itself impact individuals or society? Because basically, once we collect data, we need to build a model. So this model, we can use it in deriving what key insight, because we, we need to have key insight or key information that we can derive uh, from this model. Then we also look at what, be, by, biases might be baked into this analysis because when fitting model, there are some certain key uh, assumption in which they do talk about uh, in the chapter in which we must make sure that those key assumptions, they, they have been met before, before uh, we go about uh, fitting the model. So that once we want to evaluate how well uh, the model does, to know if actually the model is performing better, or these are just some key information about uh, bikes uh, sharing uh, in the Washington DC. I think this is a link. Uh, this was a link uh, to, to the articles about the bike sharing uh, in, uh, in Washington DC. So first of all, this, the first part here talk about uh, the three key assumptions in which uh, every, every model uh, needs uh, to meet the tricky assumption. And the first assumption is has to do with independency, which is very important, like uh, because we, we are looking at variability in the bike share ridership. Is it consistent across the, across the, uh, the temperature in the X axis? We need to ensure that uh, this assumption is met. The second assumption in which they talk about is uh, linearity, which is very important when, when we are fitting any model is assumption of linearity and also what normality of the data. We need to ensure that the data set uh, is normally, the response variable is always, uh, is normally uh, distributed. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, if this three assumption is not met, that means uh, that means uh, we have, have violated uh, some key assumption. The model might not fit. We might fit the model in that case. It might not uh, do well because if you want to make uh, maybe predictions about the future yet to be seen, that uh, the the model might not perform better because the three key assumptions we have violated one or maybe one or two of the key uh, assumption in the data in that case uh, the model might not uh, might not uh, perform uh, better so that is what that is a key part uh, for this verifying normal regression as assumptions those are the three key assumptions in which we need to ensure that we meet uh, when uh, fitting our model so uh, this part mainly talk about uh, our model case our model case, so we have a number of bike 
capital bike share, which is why at a certain day I, we have a temperature that is also a certain day of I for the temperature as a certain day I. Then we have starting with the, our, our regression model, we have a model of why I, which why we stands for the capital bike share uh, ridership at a certain day, as a certain day, which is I. Then we have our beta zero, which is the intercept. Then we have our beta one, which is uh, the slope, just as we discussed in chapter uh, chapter nine last week. Then we have our xi, which is the temperature at a certain day i. So what we look at an approximation of the real mean value, estimate mean value. So we have yi uh, tilde mu mu i, which is a, a, the approximated uh, mean value. So in every, in every, in every of the regression uh, model we are building using uh, the Bayesian uh, framework. So mainly what we are looking at, we are looking at how we can derive those, those um, uh, model uh, parameters, which is our beta zero, uh, beta one, and also the sigma, which has to do with the, the variability around uh, the data set. So, so once that is done, we need to what fits the model, which will give us like uh, these equations. So it's going to give us this equation. So in this case, they say we expect some good result as we consider 500 daily uh, observation within the two year period of uh, the response variable, which is the ridership Y is likely to be correlated over other futures of temperature what X. So yeah, we have, we have our first assumptions, uh, which we want to test in this model. The first assumption, it has to be what independence. So yeah, it is reasonable to assume that in light of temperature what X, ridership Y is independent from day to day. So in light of what temperature, so the ridership, which is our bike share ridership, it is independent of what the temperature, that is a day-to-day -day change uh, in the temperature. So when we are looking at a centered value of the intercepts, so when we are looking at the centered value of the intercept, then we are going to have beta zero C, which has to do with the centered intercept, which must always be uh, normally uh, distributed. Just as I explained last week, which uh, the value, the center intercept was, I think 5,000. Uh, this is a value for the standard deviation. Then we have the slope, uh, which is beta one, which must also be normally distributed. The value of the slope was 100. The, the standard deviation was 40 uh, squared. Then the sigma, the value of the sigma, which is a standard deviation, what exponent, exponent 0 0.008, because this value as, as what we saw in the previous chapter, chapter nine, they say the value must always be uh, positive, it must always be positive. So these are the three model parameters in which in every Bayesian model we are fitting. These are the three model parameters that uh, we are always trying to what, uh, derive. So here, Basically, they just look at uh, the bikes, the bikes data, which is uh, it shows the dates, the number of rides, and also the field temperature. So for this, uh, for the the next assumption, which is assumption two and three, for assumption two, uh, it has to be what linearity. Why assumption three, it has our data must be what normally distributed. So for that, for we to achieve that, for which to be achieved that, we need to ensure that, uh, we need to ensure that our, we need to ensure that this, our data points, our data points, are, we need to ensure that they are normally, they are normally distributed that is increase in this 
increase in the ridership does not lead to also increase in does not lead to increase in temperature. I don't know if I am correct by that. You can you can say that uh, the, 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 these are normally distributed because this line is about dividing uh, uh, all the the points within. Um, so you see they 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 spread um, uh, on both sides of the of the model line. So yes. You yes. Say, yeah. The, for this reason, you. Uh, can say they most probably normally distributed, but okay, uh, because they are they they are spread around the best fit line. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So they don't say given the combined model assumption, reasonable the posterior model should be able to simulate ridership that are very close to the original five hundred rides observation. So here we just look at our stand model in which we have already uh, built, I think in chapter nine, we have, these are the data. So we have the rights, which is a field, uh, rights explained by field temperature data is bike. Then family is what Gaussian because most uh, is normally distributed. Then the pro intercepts, uh, the pro intercepts, which is going to be Five normal five thousand and the standard deviation of I think one thousand. Then we have our pro, and this pro intercept is going to be our centered intercept, which is the beta zero c that I explained. The actual intercept, which is uh, which uh, this pro, which is going to be the slope, is going to be the slope of. 100 and standard deviation of 40. Then pro ox, which, ex, which is exponential 0.008, is going to be the sigma, which is the standard deviation. Then the number of chains for the MCMC info is four. Then the number of iteration is 5,000 multiplied by two. Then the random seed, we are using a random seed of 84735. Then we re refresh towards zeros to suppress uh, the outputs. So when we have the bike model DF, then as the data frame, we pass in the bike our bike model to convert it uh, to, to data frame. Then we have the first set, which is the head of the bike model DF, to just give the first to just get the first set of the data set. So we can see that the intercept, we can see the value of the field temperature and also the sigma. So we can get our beta zero. We extract the beta one, uh, which, is, uh, which is the slope. And also we extract uh, the sigma, which is the standard deviation. So when we, when we pass that into our one simulation, we have bikes and then we extract the MU simulated rights. So we have to, we, all, we now select the temperature, the right, and the simulation, simulated right. So when we look at the head of the data, when we look at the head, we can see that we have field temperature of this. The number of rights was 654. The simulated rights, we can see that the simulated rights and the observed right for the first day, the model did not, the model over predicts the number of bike rides. But for the second day, we had observed 1229, simulated was uh, 1533. This was the observed, the same problem here. So we can see that uh, the, but when we look at uh, the density, uh, the density plots between the observed and the simulated right number of rights for the uh, 500 uh, data point in which we can see that the observed and the simulated that the model was unable to what uh, capture the variability. It was unable to fully capture 
uh, the, the, the variability within the data set, it was still able to get the spread. It was able to capture the spread, but the, but the, the was If if it, if we look out from here, but uh, but the water was quite outside this other one was a so the body was uh, very, the entire uncertainty and the data said I don't know if there are any comments. We are looking at uh, the difference between the one posterior simulated data set of ridership along with the observed ridership data. So we are looking at how the model was able to perform. So I don't know if there are any contribution or comments on this before we proceed. Uh, basically, uh, what we did is this uh, uh, normal distribution that you can see this campanular uh, shape is the, the normal distribution that we, we just um, uh, predicted, uh, but the observed data are more like B, B model. So we need to make some adjustments to the model, as, as you said, to, to make it closer to reality. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So when we look at uh, for us to assess how well uh, the model was able to perform. So when we look at the posterior predictive check, which is a PP check function from the BS plot package, or the it compares the observed outcome variable y to the simulated data set of the posterior predictive uh, distribution. So when we look at the PP check of the bike model on just 50 data points, because we cannot do it on the entire uh, 20,000 data point. It will take a lot of time, a lot. So when we look at how well uh, the model was able to do, we can see that uh, the model was able to it perform better. It was able to explain capture the, the entire uh, uh, variability around the, the, the difference between the observed and the predicted. We can see that the model did a good job. You can see it did a good job in capturing the uncertainty around the, the data set. So the, the model did a very good job. When we compare this, uh, we can see that the model was okay. So here, we, mainly talk about uh, accuracy of the predict posterior predictive uh, model. So when they do explain in the book that uh, when we are trying to what we have only three approach in which we can use to evaluate uh, the predictive uh, qualities. So the first is the median absolute error. The second is the scale median absolute error. The third is the within 50 and within uh, 95. So when we did uh, the predictive summary of the bike model data, which is the bike, so we are going to have, uh, we, we are going to have uh, this median absolute error of 992.09, scale median absolute error of this within 50 and uh, within Within uh, 95, and 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 when we, I think in the book. Let me go back to the book. They did explain. They did explain that better in the book. Where am I? Oh. 
we are at PP check, checking the model assumption, I think. No, yeah, PP I, I check. Think maybe forward, um, the, the forward, the forward. Okay. Um, yeah, you What's should. your predictive yeah. check? No. No, 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 no. I was just uh, um, uh, right the end of the the the, um, the distribution. Okay. About, about here or something like that. Media. Uh, there it is. Yeah, posterior. Yeah, it's here. Let's see. Okay. I think this one was not on this slide. Okay, this one was a this one was a model that uh, I think it, that violates assumption two and assumption three that has to do with linearity. We can see when we look at the posterior predictive check for the model, we can see that the model was unable, the predicted data set was fall outside of the observed. So it was it did not do a better job, but when when we do some transformation on the data sets, when we do log transformation on, on the Y, so we can see that both assumption two and assumption three has been taken care of. Then when we look at the PP check for the model, we can see that the model, I think it was doing a better job. It was yeah, able to fact, work. In fact, yeah, as you can see, it, it captured the B model. Uh, yes. Of and the, yeah. So I was looking at. Where is that? It was predictive summary, median absolute error, median absolute error. I was going through this. And uh, no, I think uh, this is uh, above. It's, okay. it's above. It's, uh, yeah, it's just uh, um, uh, a little bit um, right after the my my the last um, plot okay. about here. Uh, about here, uh, that is no PP check. PP check is here. Are you 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 going? Oh, you just pass. Checking yeah. model as it's supposed no, no, to be here. No, no, no. You need to go down now. You just pass it. Supposed to be here. Okay. Uh, maybe we have a delay on in the sound. <laughs> It's uh, the the next uh, after this plot, GG plot, the next uh, there it is, PP yeah. check, yeah. We use the PP check and the. the we have check. I've explained I explained this. I'm looking for the. Ah okay okay. Median yeah, absolute I, error. Yeah um now I remember why I did it, uh because that way that this is the way to to find the summary of the results. So I grabbed it, the, the, the function from, uh, from the chapter. It's a bit um, like um, forward. And then I've used it for that. Uh, for that okay. Thing. Yeah. So- I know I, I saw it. Okay, it's here. I think it's here. It's here. I know yeah, I saw it. One prediction summary. So this was, I think, uh, nine, just say nine, eighty, nine hundred and I think nine hundred and ninety. Uh, scale median absolute error is this. So they said among the five hundred days of nine hundred zero nine hundred and ninety, right, uh, zero point seven seven standard uh, deviations from the respective products. So they say in this is compared with what PP. PPC intervals is doing so it's compatible with what we will see 
when we when we run the PPC intervals, I think you did okay. Is here. Basically, when, so when we look at the density, yeah. when we look at the, yeah. we're trying to say. No, I was saying that to summarize the results, you use this function, and it's like when you use um, tidy or uh, summary of the um, uh, of of a model. So in this case, for for Bayesian models, you can use this function, and uh, it, it it extrapolates the the result. Okay, so when we look at uh, the density uh, function. And uh, with V line X intercept is 6228, which is our value of, I think that that was the observed value that uh, we have. So we want to, which is, this is a 622, uh, 6228, which was the observed. So we want to see how it did according to what we have, because the actual Y, which is the observed is 6228. We want to, we can see that this value was far, it was more far from, I think the, the predicted value is going to be around, it's, it's going to be around here, okay? So when we look at the posterior uh, predictive, I think the posterior predictive error, just as they explained in the book, the posterior predictive error, when we consider that value, we will discover that there is, we discover the, that the model, our, our own model, our own prediction, I think it was, our model was under the, it was under predicting the amount of, the total, the number of ridership for that particular period. It's, I think it's gonna be under prediction because you will see that we are having 6,228. The, the model was predicting around which is far less, maybe let's say 3,000 plus, 3,000 plus. But when we look at the dis difference between that value and the observed value, it's going to be around 2,000 plus. So for the 75 uh, degree day, degree of temperature for that particular day, we discover that uh, the model, the model uh, on the predict uh, the ridership for that particular day. So I think this was the 2000, this was 500. So when we look at uh, the PPC, PPC intervals, which is a posterior predictive check interval, which would show us how well, how well uh, the model is performing. So, and this shows that, uh, this shows, uh, this shows, the level of uh, certainty that with 95% uh, prediction interval that the uh, the model is fairly uh, the model is fairly uh, good because I was struggling I was still struggling uh, with this plot I don't know if Federica you can step in I was because I struggle a lot to understand the the outputs. But this one here isn't the. Um about the same as the, the very first plot we did it. So the, the one with all the points and the, the main line, so the, the model line, no? Uh, so we can, uh, 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 with that plot, we, we could see, speculate that that was uh, uh, like behaving normally, okay? Here, you, you can see there is a main line uh, about it, it, um, no, I mean um, this um, um, smoothing line made of 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 points okay. at its center. You see that it grabs almost all the variability of the points because it's exactly in the middle all points yes 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 so that that is actually the same as before but now there is a little bit more specification with with this uh, um, other um, 
uh, blue bars that are able to capture the, va the variability of almost all points. So it says uh, the, 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 we have a short blue bars and we have long blue bars. So the, the short blue bars are the 50 prediction intervals. So the 50% prediction intervals, while the long blue bars are the nine, capturing the 95 prediction intervals. So the, the, it's, it's like the confidence interval. So you can yes, see yes. that we are, with this model, we have been able to capture all the variability of the observed point. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so from there, I think we went for that for the cross validation, whereby, uh, and in cross validation, we need to split our data sets into the training and what testing sets. So, so in the cross uh, validation, what they are using is, I think they use uh, the, the, the V fold, uh, the careful before cross uh, validation and the function they were using the predict uh, summary CV, then the model, they use the bike model, data is still the bikes. They gave the number of fold is 10 fold because they want to split everything into 10 fold. Then after splitting the data, we will have training sets we will use in building the model. We have test sets that we use in testing to the how good the model will do on the test set. So we have CV of the procedure, which is we grab the fold and then we look at the head. So when we look at the head, which will show us the first six observation, we show these are the six fold. This is the medium, median absolute error, scale median absolute error, the within 50 and also within 95. So when we look at CV procedure dollar sign CV to get to capture the pulled, that is a grand uh, summary. So we can see we have 1029 for the median absolute error, scale median absolute error. We have this within 50. So when we now uh, visualize this, uh, using uh, the, using, when we visualize this, we have two scenarios, scenario one, and also scenario two. So we can see that uh, between these two scenario, our, our Y new for this, it was more closer toward the center. Why for this? the gap was still uh, very far. So they said a two hypothetical predictive uh, probability density function for Y new, the yet unobserved ridership on a new day, the eventual observed value of, of, of that is the number of ridership is represented by the dash vertical lines, which is what we have here. That is the number of ridership. Then the expected log of the predictive uh, density, the expected log of the predictive density, which measures the average log of posterior predictive across all possible new data points. So when we use uh, that function, our low, our ELPD function, uh, expected log predictive uh, density, which mainly what that function does is that is using what we call the leave one out uh, cross our validation pro approach, whereby we can have 500 data points. It's going to drop the first one, fits all the model on the 400 and 499, drop another one, fits on. So it's going to use that approach, going to leave one data point out, fits the model on all. So when we use the low, functions, so that is what it's doing, is using the 
leave one out cross validation approach, we pass in the bike model. So we say model ELPD dollar sign estimates to get all the estimates uh, from the model. So we can see with that we have ELPD, which is we have this value, the standard error is this, P low, we have this, uh, and also what they do explain in the book that they they expected uh the ex the ELPD uh uh, the ELPD, the expected uh, log predictive density. So they, they do explain in the book it, that the function, the, the function is, uh, the, is very complicating, but they explain that the higher the value of our ELPD, the better the performance of our model. The higher that value, the better the performance of our model. But they all further explain that this is always uh, uh, very uh, complicating if we are using this uh, ELPD in evaluating uh, the performance uh, of our model. I don't know if uh, there are comments on this or further expansion, maybe. Uh, Hello. And um, mm, uh, so this is negative. <laughs> so it's not very high. Uh, okay. okay, so let me just go to the improving. So yeah, mainly let's talk about that uh, improving posterior predictive accuracy of our model. So in order for us to improve, we need to do explain that we need to collect uh, more data. We need to use different or more predictors in order for us uh, to be able to what, improve uh, the posterior predictive accuracy uh, of our variation model in which uh, we are we are building. So in the in these parts, uh, we mainly talk about how good is the Monte Carlo markup chain simulation versus how good is the model? So these are two uh, main questions. So first of all, there are some key questions in which we need to ask how well is our MCMC simulation approximating the model? So because when we are looking at the MCMC, we need to look at how the chain, the mix of how the chain uh, are able to mix uh, on, with each other, so we need to assess that. Then they also, we need to also ask our question that does the model, does the model fits well, very well with the data? Because before fitting the model, as I said earlier, there, there are some key assumptions uh, that we need to consider. We need to ensure that those three key assumptions are being met in order for, before we can, and so that we know that uh, we are not violating any assumptions. So they also ask that are the assumptions uh, for the model, are they reasonable enough? Is the model fair? Does it produce good predictions? Because in every model in which we are building, we need to be able to what, uh, make uh, predictions about uh, uh, the, the future yet, yet to be seen data. And also, I think they also explain that though we, we I think there are several uh, models, but it's not all models that are always correct, but we need to keep on tweaking. We need to keep on making some kind of adjustment in, in such a way that once we are through with the model, the model will make accurate uh, predictions about, about uh, yet uh, to be seen that I think the last, I think that is all. The next is just about resources.